This conference will now be recorded. Hi, hello. Hello. Hi, hello. Welcome to the next session on SAP above. In the last class, we have discussed about what exactly the internal table operations. And so in the internal table, there are three, three types of data objects which we have. One is the variable and another one is the work area and internal table. And variable, we can hold only single field and single value. And work area, we can store multiple fields with a single record. And internal table, we can store multiple fields with a multiple uh, records. And if you want to define work area and internal table, since it is in a multiple fields, and we need to have a reference, the reference should be in a type. In the types, we are going to declare in a, a multiple fields. And the types which we are going to refer in your work area and internal table. But whenever you define a work area, the keyword which we are going to use is in a type. And when it is in an internal table, the keyword which we are going to use in a type table. Okay, this is what we discussed in the last class. And what exactly the how you can move the data, how you can assign the data to your data objects. So if it is in a variable, we can assign the value where x equal to 5. And if it is in a work area, we will use work area hyphen field name, which is equal to the value. And if it is in an internal table, we have a different kind of things which we can do in the internal table operations. So first, if you want to assign the values to the internal table, so definitely we have to use work area. From the work area only, we can assign the values to the internal tables. So append work area to the internal table. But whenever you use an append statement, always the record will be added in the last row. Uh, last row. And if it is an insert, and to insert the record at particular positions, suppose let's say can I have any 10 records, if you want to insert the record at fifth position, so we are going to use an insert statement. And whenever we use an insert, uh, insert statement, we have to use an index. Index means here at what position you need to insert the record. And but whenever you do the insert, so let's take an example of having uh, have inserted, inserted the record at fifth position, but the existing record which is there at fifth position, that will be moved to the next record. Right? So that's an insert statement. And describe table. Suppose if you want to calculate number of records in the internal table, we are going to use a describe table and clear. So if you want to remove the data from work area, if you want to remove the data from variable, if you want to remove the data from internal table, we can use the clear statement. And also there is an equivalent statement, a refresh, which will move only the which will remove only the data from the internal table. And free, it will remove the data from work area as well as sorry it will remove the data from it will remove the data as well as it will remove the memory from the application layer that's an every statement and with move we can move the data from variable to variable we can move the data from work area to the work area we can move the data from internal table to the internal table base that's the statement which we have seen in the last class and today and we are going to see the more operations so the more operations are so maybe uh, you know there are some kind of looping statements yes. okay so what exactly the looping statements which we have that we are going to see first i will go with the conditional statements then i will go to the conditional statements so we have any conditional statements okay already everybody knows what exactly the conditional statements tell me what are all the conditional statements which we have conditions uh, and is an additional operator. Yeah, if okay, maybe I can put on a condition, right? So if condition, if this is true, okay, do some code, right? Else, if I put on another condition, okay, this I, we call it a multi condition, right? Else, if and if it is true, do some code. And else for all other conditions, maybe so end. So this is my one of the okay syntax for the conditions. So like this, we are going to implement. Okay. So if all conditions doesn't met, it goes to the false condition. 
So this is the false condition which we can see this. Okay, this is the if statement which we are going to use. It. Okay, this controls your program flow, means program execution flow. Okay, so if that is the case, we are going to use the conditions over here. And the operators, what kind of operators we can use whenever you use any conditions? Okay, we can use the and as an operator, we can use an R as an operator, we can use equal as an operator, we can use uh, less than as an greater than as an operator. Okay, and greater than equal is an operator. How we can mention greater than or equal? So this is a greater than or equal and uh, less than or equal. And else we can use the this symbol as an equal EQ and not equal to NE. Okay, and uh, 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 greater than or equal G E and greater than only G T, less than or equal L E and only less than L T. Okay, these are all the all the operators, the conditional operators which we can use it. Yes. So this this kind of symbols which we are going to use it. Okay, this we call it an operators, conditional operators. A comparison of sorry, comparison operators, not conditional, which is a like comparison. Operators. So these are all the different kind of comparison operators which we have. Okay. So this is the if condition is. In the if conditions, we'll we'll see the implementation later. Just I'm talking about only the theory over here. And we have any one more statement called case statement. Let's take an example of okay. Let's I will declare one thing date data. Okay, I have different colors. Case. Color type integer okay so you apply the color format colors right so i can do like this case color and end case always case you will be adding like if and if case and case okay so like this we are going to have the statements and here my syntax is when when if it is in a one what is the color is did you remember what is the color for one? Okay, maybe I think uh, uh, light blue. Okay, just I am giving some example. Exactly not correct. And it is true and right. Hmm? Okay, maybe some gray color. Hmm? When the value which is equal to three, I think it's an yellow, huh? yellow color. Yeah. So like this. Hello. See guys, this is also one of the kind of conditional operators. Okay. So what exactly the difference is? So if it is in a if condition, it will check the first condition. If if the condition doesn't meet, it goes to the second condition. If the condition doesn't meet, it goes to the third condition. Like that, one by one, it is going to check it. But in case of in a case statement, okay, then a case statement. See color. If it is equal to three, directly the cursor comes to the three days. So, so what in terms of the performance, the case gives more performance than the if condition is. Okay, that's the case and if conditions. We regular every program we are going to use these kind of things. Don't worry on this. So then next we have in a loop statement. What kind of loops we have? So maybe I have in a different kind of loops. Okay, we have loops. So there are different kind of loops which we have in above, like other languages also. Okay. So what kind of loops which we have is? One is unconditional loops. The other one is conditional loops. One is Unconditional loops. Okay, what are the unconditional loops we have? Is one is do and do. So this is one kind of loop which we have in a path. And another one is loop at either into work area and end loop. 
This is also one more condition. This we call it an unconditional loop. And control C and control D. And also we have an a conditional loop. So here the conditional loop is it's a while and you must provide a condition yes. and and okay so here this is an unconditional loop condition is condition is an optional okay whether you write the condition or not that's not a problem but here in case of why you must provide a condition to exit your loop case okay that's an a while and it's like a first state for loop this is an a while loop Okay. In the for loops, we have do and do and loop and loop in the above. And here we have a while and condition and end the while is. So how exactly it will work? See, we are going to see. So do and do. Normally, if you do and do and do, it's an infinite loop case. Okay, it will keep on, it will loop it. It will keep on, it will loop it. It is in a do and do. But if it is in a loop, here you can see I have an item. Okay. So it will loop based on the number of records in the internal table. Suppose if you have eight records, it will loop for the eight times. Okay, if you have six records, it will loop for the six times. If you have 20 records, it will loop for the 20 times. So that's the difference between loop at ITAP and do and do. Do and do will continuously loop, it's an infinite loop. And if you want to exit that do and do, and we need to write some exit statements, or else we can mention the n times. Suppose maybe I can put like this do n times. So that means it will loop for only the particular thing. Suppose if you put do 10 times, it will loop for the 10 times. Do 5 times, it will loop for the 5 times. Do 30 times, it will loop for the 30 times. Very, very important. So if you want to write some algorithms, we are going to use the do and while and while and loop and and the loop case. Okay, very, very important. Okay, first I will start with the uh, do and do. Then we'll go with the uh, first. I will start with the loop and loop. Then then we go with the do and do. Then we will learn the while and while list. So how exactly we are going to see is so now I open the SAP. We'll see the practical. Then practical is important to understand the concept. Okay. SAP is easy. SAP user. see then maybe first we will start with loop item so we are introducing the first loop item statements is create so these are the foundations which are very very important yes. so demo on internal loops so we go with that so always i start with the types okay and uh, begin up uh, ty underscore maybe today i'm going to do to the sales what is the order number an order number maybe i will give the 10 length and which is an API of n, it's an enumeric. Next, we have today I will take an item as well, this item which is an a six, okay, which is an a type of you know, n. So, next we have an a product, okay, which is an a uh, party, which is an a type of character, and we have an a amount, and which is an a amount is maybe I can put. Um, Amount is 16 and the type and T and the decimals. So, sorry. And you need to end, end up, okay, PY underscore six. Okay, now I need a work area. How can we clear the work area? Work area, what is the keyword? Type PY underscore six. And we have internal table. We need to define the internal table. But internal table, it is a type table of PY underscore six. Okay, now I need to pass the values, control S, and do the pretty printer. And here I'm going to 
assign the values. How we can assign the values to the work area? Work area hyphen and which is an order which is equal to thousand and uh, work area hyphen next one is uh, item and which is equal to the okay zero. How uh, what is the length argument? Maybe you can give the ten. Okay, then work area hyphen and uh, the product and it is equal to the maybe uh, item. Okay, then an amount work area hyphen uh, amount and which is equal to the maybe you can provide fifty five thousand five hundred point zero zero. Actually, if it is in a numeric Okay, no need to put in a single code phrase. But the problem here is when I use the decimals, decimals will be separated with the period, right? But system will think whenever it sees the period, system will think that the statement is ended here itself. So to avoid that, see now I do the syntax check. Better printer, do the syntax check. See guys. Statement 00, 00 is not defined. Why it is doing so? We have an a rule above statement end with the period. So until this, it will consider it as an a uh, code. Then here it is not able to find what about 00. zero. That's why in the backward decimal, I always use in a single code. See now the value will be assigned as a 55,500. In the last, it will take as a period. So that is the specialty of the Packet decimal. Whenever you use a packet decimal, you must use a single quote case. So, did you get this point? So, why? Because suppose if I don't put the single quote, it will consider this period. It takes as an end above statement end, and it is giving the syntax error as an zero zero is not a different. Okay. Now we have an append and work area to the. Okay. This is one record list. We I added an iPhone. Then maybe I order, uh, maybe in sometimes case, whenever you order it mobile, I will order the screen guard. In the same order, I will order the screen guard. In the same order, I will order the, uh, what you can order, maybe headphones, we can order it. Right? That is possible. So for one order, you can have any multiple things. So that's why today I introduced in a second item. The order number is same, but we have any items, two items. Okay, the second item here is, I can say it's in a, I mean, maybe headphones. Okay, so maybe the cost is five thousand five hundred. Okay, this is the cost. Okay, two items I have added. Okay, let's let it be. And I'm going to take control C and one more record. And one more record is the order is different. Guys, here the order is one zero zero one, and item is uh, first item which always should be ten. And maybe I am ordering in a Samsung. Okay. Maybe the cost is uh, around 30,000. Okay, then I have taken three records, and then maybe I will take another record, control C, item record, item record, copy, and control V. So, like this, I'm going to add the another product, which is the name 101, and which is the name 20, maybe headphones, uh, not headphones, maybe this guy added the screen guard. But the screen guard, maybe. Okay, the screen guard is very fine. Okay. So like this, I have a different records which I can pass the data from work area to the internal table. This is my second 1002 and which is an a uh, Vivo and maybe this is an a uh, 45,000 and maybe this guy is added in a different uh, thing. That is an a, this is a second uh, 1002. The, um, he added maybe case of a uh, phone case maybe which is the name equal to the 600. 600. 600. How many records which we have is six records which we have in the internal table. But now I need to output the six records. How you can do that? So I have an A6 records in the internal table. I need to process multiple records from the internal table. How we can do it? How we can do it? I need to process, I need to print the in the output. Maybe I can do like this. Loop at very, very important into work area and loop. See how many times it will loop now? Tell me. 
like what I told about loop, how many times it will loop, how many times it will loop, whenever you do in a loop on the internal table. I told here we have in a six record. Yeah, it will do in a six times loop. We will see in the debugging how exactly it will work. So now whenever you do the internal table into work area, okay, this will be processed record by record. First time it will process first record into work area. In the second loop, it will process the second record into the work area. Third time it will process the third record into the work area. Fourth time it will process the fourth record into the work area. We'll see in the debugging how exactly it will work. So first one is I need to print an order. I need to print work area item. What is the next one? Item. Right? I have a name work area item uh, product. I have a work area item. Yeah. So that's it. So end. I always need to print a period. Ready printer. And save it. And do the syntax. No syntax errors found. And activate the program. See, normally we can do the print also, but see how this is. So let's take an example. First record, print it. Second record, print it. Third record, print it. Fourth record, print it. Fifth, fifth record, print it. Sixth record, print it. Like this we can do, guys. But how many times you are writing the code? See? Every time you are writing the code, right? So work area, work area, work area. We don't do like this actually. So maybe see, I will comment this same functionality. I can achieve it. First, let me uh, print this. See guys, first record, second record, third record, fourth record, fifth record, sixth record. See, so, but here, what is the problem? So you are writing the same kind of code n number of times this. So normally we don't do like this. Okay, instead of this, we have an option. We can process the record from the internal table. We can loop the data. We can loop the internal table data. We can save the data record by record in our area. And so this code will, now you can see the same functionality we can do. So I am looping the internal table data into work area. First record, it will look, it will store the first record in the work area. It will print the first record. Then it goes to the second record. The second record will be moved to the work area. And we will print the second record. And again, it goes to the third record. The third record goes to the work area. So work area, always it will have only one record. Base. You cannot have multiple records. So then it will, uh, and also that is in a recent record. And it will print the record in the, it will print the record in the output. Like this, it will look for the six times. Six times we are going to print the six records. So maybe 3D printer activate. And now I can put on a debugger base. Already you know how exactly this code will work. I don't do the debugging, but this is a new statement. I will put in a breakpoint and loop, put in a breakpoint and execute. So see guys, I tell how many records which we have? Six records. Okay, what is the first record? 1000 iPhone 55000 is the first record, right? So whenever you do the, do the loop, first it will loop the first record. It will store in the work area. Okay, we have the data in work area. We can print the data from the work area. Then it goes to the second record. It will loop the second record into work area. It will pass the record into work area. We will take the values from work area. We will print the second record. And it goes to the third record. And it, it will pass the data to the work area. And like this, it will process six records, but there is no seventh record. It will exit out of the loop phase. Automatically, it will exit from the loop. So we'll see in the debugging the same concept. See, so my cursor is here. So see what is the work area now? There is no, uh, maybe it is comes from the previous record base. See, 1002, right? This value is comes from the previous record, the work area 1002, uh, case 600. So now if you want to, uh, avoid this what you need to write here i don't want this value huh? perfect you have to clear you must clear the data from the work area guys okay maybe uh, 
that is i didn't done but not not a problem now you can see f5 now you see the work area see what is the value 1000 10 i4 and 55000 what record it, it is in the internal table first record right so it process the first record into the work area and we are printing the data first record okay 1000 and item product and amount so we write with the right we are going to print the record on the output yes we are printing the data on the output okay that is done and it goes now and loop it and now you see it comes to the second record right second record is 1020 headphones and 5500 okay then it is printing the second record and it goes to the third record and you see the third record is in it 1001 which is in a samsung and 30000 and uh, it will goes to the uh, it will print the record and it goes to the again it goes to the next record it's in a screen guard 500 rupees it is printing the screen guard and again it goes the uh, vivo and vivo is at a 35000 it is printing the 35000 and now it goes to the next last one case and then gun is our we have plus six records whenever you press f5 it comes out of the loop and see whenever you see standard code press f5 you can see same functionality we have achieved with the loop and write statement what is your question Hmm. You want the debug graph? Yes. Okay. Yes. Sir, uh, just now you have uh, entered point and data sir. So, using K5, we are going step by step. Mm. So, as per the, uh, to the extent, as per what I have understood, is uh, whenever we press K5, once that step is uh, completed, only then the output of it will be displayed. But here, the all the details have been displayed at the time. Oh, I got it. See, actually, this is not output here. This is not output. See, whenever the record comes into the work area, the values are available. Here, you don't don't think that it's not a output. Okay, you are you are you are you are checking the values here. See, maybe what I will do. See. Um, so see what I will do is I will write in a clear here work area. And guys, after you finish your processing, okay, again you need to put in a clear this on this. See, the first record comes to work area. I am printing the work area. Okay, remove the data from the work area. Yeah, see. Now I will show you that if again you will see what exactly it is. Okay. So put on a breakpoint here. Okay, that's observations are good. So now you can see. See guys, work area now, no data, right? But what I did is just I press field by field, guys. So if you click on field by field, it will show here work area is in a combination of all fields. But if you want to see that particular field, I click on the particular field, even the work area order, work area item, work area product, work area amount. It's not a output. Okay, suppose when I click F5, the data goes from ITAP to the work area. Work area is filled with the values. The values are displaying here. Just do, see now, F5. See that values are shown. Individual field level I have taken here. Okay, yes. Now with the right statement, we are printing these values. These values we are printing on the output one by one. One by one we are printing on the output screen. Now, yes, I printed all the values. Now, I don't want these values. Okay, clear the value. See, again, it comes to the initial. Now, second loop, it goes to the second loop. And again, F5, see, the second record comes to the Right? So, F5, 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 F5. We are printing the all the fields in the output. Yes. I printed, I don't want this second record in the work area. And clear it. Clear it. And it goes to the third record. And guys, observe here something. Okay, even observe the hearing. Okay. There are some system variables, size of RC, size of huh? 
Okay, now this is my third loop. Okay, this is my third loop. And we have the values. We are printing the third record and clear the value. And go to again loop. And this is my fourth record. Okay, so I print the values, the fourth record values on the output. And go to here. And again, it's in a fifth record. And I'm printing in a fifth record on the output. And it goes here. Then here you can see sixth record. I'm printing the values for the sixth record. Clear and done. Our data is only we have six records. And F5, it comes to the loop base. It doesn't go inside the loop. And it will come out of the loop and it will print it. Now tell me in the loop and loop. Okay, I would like to know in which loop pass you are in. What is the system variable you will use it? See, we are in the sixth record. We have six in records in the internal table. Okay, suppose if you are in the first record. Okay, so there is any some okay some indicator which is showing showing. So what is the loop? Uh, the loop iteration, which loop iteration you are in? So, in which loop you are in? So, some indicator it is showing the value. Okay, what is that indicator? Uh, yeah, that's why I told the observation. So, the indicator is site abix space. So, again, I exclude now. See now, site abix, leave the previous one. Press the F5. See, guys, what is the value 1? Okay, you are in the first loop of the iteration. You are in the first iteration in the loop. Okay, don't cons don't look about these things. Okay, print fine. Second record. See guys, site abix equal to two. That means you are in which record? Second record. Second record. Okay, this is the iteration we call it. Loop iteration. Which loop pass? The technical term we call it loop iteration. In which loop iteration you are in? So this is my printing the records. That's not a problem. Here I am considering about the site address. Okay. So next one is for fourth record for indicator index that we call simple term is an index. Okay. So here we have an six. Okay. So site abix very very important it is. Okay. It's a system variable. And so here site abix. Will hold the okay, will hold the value of the iteration in the loop. So, this is my step. very, very important. Okay, we can write algorithm says by doing like by using this fundamentals. Huh? Very, very important. Site tabics will hold the value of the current loop iteration or site abix will hold the value of the current loop iteration yes. current current means what exactly the current loop iteration in the loop yes. that's an nice site abix okay the first record is the one suppose sometimes yes. okay you are in the 90000 record some base I can directly go to the 90,000 record. If you want to see, okay, in which record it is, okay, it's 99,999 record. So that tells the site habits will tell us what exactly the index or what exactly the iteration of your loop base. Okay, that's an a site habits. Okay, maybe so that's an a site habits with a loop base. And also, guys, so we told loop is an unconditional loop. Loop is an unconditional loop. But we can put the conditions as well, guys. Let's take an example of I would like to print only where order which is equal to the thousand. So now you tell me how many times it will loop it. Two times, guys. Why? Because it doesn't exclude for all other values. Here the value one not one, one not two, one not two, one not two. It doesn't go inside. It will execute only the order which is equal to the thousand and which is equal to the thousand. Now you see the output and execute. Okay. 
See, we have five. Okay, maybe I can display the order thousand. Okay, remaining details and go to here. And next one is also thousand, but item is twenty. So loop will process multiple record space. See, done. We have five. See, it is printed only two records. So optionally, you can have the conditions. So you can put an A with a where comes. Additionally, you can use an A where where till equal to the come value, right? We put an A field and where the generic statement has been field equal to the value. What is the value which we need to do? Okay, this is an A loop and end loop case. Okay. But each program, every program, without a loop, there is no program in the above. Without a loop, there is no program in the above. And so we are going to heavily use the loops in the in our above programming. So here we are talking about only one internal table. But in the real time, we handle the suppose I have different kind of data. I have a product data, I have a customer data, I have a uh, sales data, I have an a delivery data, I have an invoice data. Okay, so all the data we are going to combine together. Just I have introduced one loop statement for the internal table and work area. And later, actually, when we go to the database, then when come back from database to the other programming, that time we have heavily use the loop at item syntax. So the most important is the one is the Loop state. What this is also one is one of the internal table operation. So what it will do loop. So loop it will process the multiple records from the internal table. So what it will do? It will process multiple records from internal table table record. By record guys. See how it is, it does every record, record by record, it will process the database. And psi hyphen tabix is the system variable which holds the value of current loop iteration exactly this is so the value site abix will hold the current value of the current iteration of your loop phase. that's an uh, loop statement but sometimes i need to read an a only one single record is the particular record i need to read it okay for that we don't do like this case if you want to read single record so we don't do this statement okay this gives the low performance okay so if you want to read, maybe I need to read a thousand, maybe uh, only one single product. Let's take an example of yesterday you asked me, right? So how can I, suppose if I read thousand and I, I may get other value, but if you want to read only single record, but here you need to pass the key to the single record. So tell me by seeing it, what is the key in this? By seeing the values, which one provides a key? Uh, order and also item wise combination of these two becomes a key because if it is a thousand thousand i have only two records whenever you see the two records it's not a key but the combination if you look at other item thousand ten other item thousand two so this is an, a unique value this is combination is a unique value so if you want to read single record you we must use the keys and the syntax which we will use to read the single record. So read table. So read table we are going to use this. So what exactly the read table we are going to see now? So read table. So what it will do? To read single record from internal table base. We are all talking about here the internal table, not the database table. That we need to remember. 
okay it's not a database table this is an internal table which is an a temporary table which will be available in the runtime execution of your program that is an a internal table it is in a temporary table which will be available whenever you execute in a program the data will not be available permanently if you want to store permanently the data you need to handle with the database tables so always you need to remember these statements applicable for the internal table we have a different statements for the database tables okay to read the single record from internal table we use the read table and the syntax is a read table the table is internal table and into here also we store into the work area and here we use the condition with the key guys loop will be in a where condition where is the operator conditional operator here with the key my order example which is equal to the thousand and my item which is equal to single record means always i use in a so this is my value this is my value so maybe i will use the statement maybe after this uh, i am going to do what i am going to do is so just read table maybe i would like to read one more record uh, a 1001 and 10 okay 1001 10 means it's in a samsung right you will get in a samsung record so read table write down into work area with the key where order equal to the uh, 1001 and item which is equal to the okay if it is the value we need to print so right okay same same right you can use only here we can see only one record it will print the one it's not a loop it's in a read loop means it will print all the records but here whatever the record which is there that will be printed in the output okay pretty printer same do the same thing check no errors so i can export see the third record this record this two records from the loop means but this record is from the read statement right we have inputted 1001 and 10 and which is in a sense and maybe see when you see in the output you don't get much uh, information always the debugger is our friend guys in the coding the debugger is our friend always it gives lot of information see execute okay leave about this f5 it goes to the next here see guys i am reading the uh, maybe work area is uh, work area now it's, we have cleared so initial now right now I read the record from internal table into work area with the key order number equal to 1000 and item equal to 10 do f5 and see guys 1000 1 10 samsung and 30 it reads the single record from the internal table guys so this is the uh, read table which we have used guys. only single record by using use but see guys there are two types of algorithms search algorithm whenever you read it the system will look for any record in the internal table that means it will check for the records okay so there are some search algorithms which will be uh, Uh, which will be available so what exactly those search algorithms normally you know the algorithms i know so what kind of search algorithms we have so we have a different kind of search algorithms okay one is the linear search algorithm al algorithms right and we have a binary algorithm okay this is what we have learned right so what exactly the search algorithm what exactly the linear algorithm so it will search for the record transit transit routinely it will search for the record Consecutively means record by record means record by record. So that's a linear algorithm. So what exactly it is? 
So, what exactly is this? So, maybe I will go to that table then again. Guys, now by default it's in a linear algorithm, guys. By default, which is an inbuilt function, guys. So we cannot the functionality is not visible actually here. So the algorithm is built in the kernel level actually. So SAP built in a kernel. In the kernel level, they built in an algorithm. So by default, whenever you, you use an read table, by default it's in a linear algorithm. So what exactly linear algorithm means? See, we have an idea. Okay, so I read the record with 1001 10, right? So how SAP performs the read on the internal table is first it will come to the first record. Okay, so is it 1001 or not? It's not a 1001. Okay, it goes to the second record. It will search for 1001 whether it is a 1001 or not. Okay, then it comes to the third record. Yes. Which is equal to 1001, which will use me in a record. But here I have only six records. Okay, but what about if I have these many records in the internal table? Okay, how many records? Uh, ones, tens, hundreds, uh, thousands, ten thousands, uh, lakh, ten lakh, and uh, hundred lakh is, hundred lakh is four, and ten four, and hundred four records I have. Okay, maybe my record is uh, at 99 pro, uh, 999 records, 99 pro, 999 records. So if it is in a linear search, this search will go like record by record, record by record, consecutively it will search. And it, it search for the 99 pro times it is going to search in terms of the performance, so which is not an like, Good algorithm is linear search is not a good algorithm. So always, whenever we use a read table, we need to use a binary algorithm base. That we call it a binary search or binary algorithm base. So what exactly the binary algorithm? So it provides a what it, it, it provides less performance, right? So just I give an example. You have to always think about. The more records case okay always we have to think about more records than i have given you an example six records but if you have uh, 104 records in, in your internal table what happens when i read the record at, which is there at 99 pro uh, 99 pro index okay where site habits equal to 99 pro then what is what is the performance but the performance will go very uh, drastically it goes down and when the algorithm what exactly when the algorithm will do what it will do guys so do you know of anyone binary algorithm? So I have, let's take here, I have an F, okay, uh, I will take 10,000 records, okay, in my internal table I have 10,000 records, so this is my item, this is my item, where item equal to 10,000 records, so I search for an record, where psi hyphen tab which is equal to maybe uh, 10,000, right? 9,999. Uh, 9, so this is the record which is there at some position. Okay. What it will do is it will put in a search algorithm like this. So first it will divide these records into two parts. 
okay so here you can see there are two parts so the first part the records comes till 5000 comes into the first set the another 5000 goes to the another set okay from 6000 uh, 6000 to 9000 uh, and 5000 to the okay uh, sorry yes 1 to uh, 5000 sorry please uh, 1 to 5000 sorry 5001 to 10000 so this is exactly it is splitting into the half of the records right so now again it will do the half of the records again and it will search the one to two thousand five hundred and again i have and two thousand five hundred to the two thousand five hundred and one one to the uh, four thousand uh, five thousand so like this it will split every record into the multiple parts even parallelly it excludes case so it will do parallel processing okay this side it will continue this side it will continue it is going to provide in a parallel search algorithm and here it will split again this 2500 by 12025 12025 to the 2500 and here it will uh, split into the half of the record like this it will go it it will search for the record parallelly here also it will split the records in the same way it will divide into the two parts and it will search for the record so whenever it finds in the last somewhere it finds that record here here it finds that wait okay my order which is equal to 9900 so immediately when it finds it will stop all the other algorithms and it will give the return the it will return the return. so compared to this and this which will give the good performance the second one will give the good performance it's always use in a binary algorithm or it's in a binary search so what exactly the binary search we are going to this is an entry question here definitely they ask what exactly the binary search or binary algorithm okay so we call binary algorithm here in the SAP, we call it binary search. And what is it? the binary search? So simple definition, you can give it. So you can practically, you can explain the same example, guys, whenever they ask, okay? So they will understand what exactly it is. It will split the records into multiple groups multiple groups and system start searching for the record when the record forms all the such algorithms pop and system will return the value. okay and if you look at compare it to linear search by default it's in a linear search case no need to write in it a linear search if you don't write anything that becomes in a linear search and if you write explicitly binary search it becomes in a binary algorithm okay compared to linear search it gives good form it gives a good performance compared to the linear so how you can do the binary search is okay whenever you do a read table either into work area with uh, key where order and which is equal to the maybe i am giving the same example 99999 and item which is equal to the 10. let's assume we have this many records and you need to write explicitly which is a name binary search See binary research. So you need to write explicitly this. 
but there is a condition, free condition to implement binary search. Can anybody give free condition to give it a binary search? So what should it is? What it should be? How the record should be? Maybe I will do little manipulation on the code. What happened? Okay, maybe breakpoint is there here now. See, guys, we have a thousand the thousand is there in the last okay suppose whenever you read the record with binary search so it will split the record into two parts right so maybe the first part three and the second part is four five six right so but the thousand is here thousand is here and so whenever it splits the record maybe you may get the spurious results please. So, if you want to apply an binary means you may not get the proper result. Okay. So, if you want to apply an binary search, so I should get these records in a in a sequentially. I need to have a record space. And in mathematics, what exactly that we are going to use? What are the terms? If you want to provide in a sequence, what you are going to do? In perfect. So that we call it a sort things. We are going to sort the records in the internal table. And that is also a one of the uh, internal table operations. What is the next operation is sort. Sort. So do you know the sort? Do you, can anybody know what are the sort algorithms we have in the industry? Yeah. So we have a bubble sort. We have a linear sort. We have an, a uh, shell sh uh, uh, sort. Okay, we have a lot of sorts, but I didn't remember those. But so this is a sorting mechanism. You can sort the records. So we can. What it will do? It will sequence the records. It will sequence the record and. By default, by default, it's a ascending sequence. By default, whenever you do a sort, by default, we do an ascending sort. Ascending means small to big, lower to higher. Correct. So ascending sequence. And if we if if we need descending explicitly we have white descending okay so exactly what exactly it is suppose let's take an example i put on a sort i tap by default it will do an ascending order okay thousand thousand one thousand two thousand three like this but if you want to descend it by reverse you need to write a code additionally by descent part of this. So maybe I put the, I will, will implement, we will see the uh, things in the debugging. Okay, everything I show in the debugging only, way. step by step, we learn the subject with the debugging only, then only we will get the subject. Just explaining the output and don't get anything this. Okay, maybe I will come here and come here. So before loop, before printing the data, maybe I will use the start. Start I tap. And normally we can put sort item like this. And if you want to have with the specific fields, we can use by by order or by using printer. 
it will consider the order and as well as the order. So do the breakpoint in slow. See now the sort before sort thousand year the thousand right the two year the uh, two and one one is already in the sorting mode. But I, I I must have I should get this record here. I should get this record before to this. That's the sequence, right? So now you do the F5. F5. And now you go and see the record. See, 1000, 1000, 1010. Oh, there it happens. So anyway, 1010, we have 1020, 1001, 1001, 1002, 1002. Actually, this is something is happening. Okay, so it is hot anyways. It is hot. Maybe I can exclude again. Come back and exclude again. Yep, right. Now you can see I have. So before sort, see 1001, 1002, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now whenever you sort it, F5, now it will be in the perfect order. 10, 20, 1001, 10, 1001, 20, 1002, 10, 1002, 20, which comes in a sort, ascending order. But if you want to have a descending order, and you have to write explicitly. Explicitly means here you need to write four days, descending. Okay, you have to write it in descending, then it will do in a descending. System by default is an ascending sort. But if you want to have this in the descending, and now you can see. So I do in a descending now, F5. And now we go to the internal table. And you see the hmm, 1000, 20, 1000, 10. But I should get 1002, 10 first days. It's not yes, taking. Yeah? Yes, Huh? <laughs> no. If I put two, this should come upper days. Because see, one zero zero two, it's not working. Order item. Okay, maybe only the item it is taking as we say. Did you get my point? Yes. It's descending, only the item is descending, not the order. Okay. Can we do like this? Control X. Control X. So I put in a descending. Based on the two piece. So do the syntax, no syntax. Now you observe what happens. Oh, so Ida. Now you can see first one is thousand ten one zero zero. So which is not in a sequencing order, but my expectation should be. I should get a descending 1002 to 21st. 1002, then second 10. Tell me how it works. Now you go and see. See, 1002 to 20 and 1002 to 10, 1001 20, 1001 10, and 120. Perfectly, it's working. So here the problem is whenever you write in a descending in the last, only this field it is considering as a descending. But if you want to apply the two fields and a descending, so first you must provide a descending, then you need to put what the fields you need to consider while you are doing a descending. Okay. And sometimes case, so I search with the what record rate table 100110. Is it giving me correct record? 100110. Yeah, that's not a problem. But most of the times it is a heavy records case, even whenever you do the SART. So in the binary search, the precondition is we must sort the 
internal table with the fields which are in condition. So here my condition, what is the condition? Order is one field, item is one field. So your internal table should start with the internal table, with the field condition, whatever you use the field in the condition that you should use. And in how to sort it is always it should be in <laughs> ascending order. Don't try to do any descending order whenever you use a binary subject. Okay. So, so this is the must and should condition whenever you implement a binary subjects. Definitely it's an improved question is okay. So what exactly is the point is such and so how can you get a single record and what is the precondition to implement a binary subject? Okay, this is a very very important question in the fundamentals point of view. And so we can do if you want to now you tell me my question. If you want to process multiple records in the internal table, which statement you need to use? If you want to process multiple records from the internal table, which statement you need to use? Not do. Did I explain do today's class? Loop, right? So what you did with the loop? You loop the six records, you printed the six records. That is the processing. And if you want to read single record from the internal table, which statement we need to use? Huh? Read table. So this you need to remember is very, very important. If you want to process multiple records, we will use the loop statement. If you want to read the single record, we use the read statement. But whenever we use, whenever you read in a single record, always we don't do any linear search. And always you need to do in a binary search. But if you want to do in a binary search, we need to start the internal table with ascending order. Okay, that's it for that day. And do you have any questions? Ah, oh, yes. And we have a the integers can be good for alphabetics. Sort of, yeah, we can do that. So try and tell me tomorrow what is the So what you can do is sort this by product. Product is in a character, right? So sort this by product. So what is the behavior? You check and let me know how exactly it is. So the here the sort somewhere in the middle of the program. Okay. So how will it access to the entire program that is written after the statements? See, here my requirement is when I need to use the sort normally is so whenever you would like to read, or whenever you would like to print, you should print in a you should print in a sequential order actually. That is good, right? So before printing it, I sort the internal table, that's it. Automatically, the algorithm works on the internal table. It doesn't take, it doesn't take care of for this. It doesn't care. Why? Because I have the values in the internal table. So do the such algorithm, algorithm on the internal table. Okay. So this statement will do a sorting on this internal table. So this is a sort which is an input algorithm which is there in the kernel. We don't talk about the kernel. Then we have the above statement of a side. Then we have done a clear work area. So, my question is that clear work area has to work first prior to this loop and all those. I think the clear work area has to. So that the entire details of the manual table almost be dedicated to the But we move the data to internal table. I stored somewhere. See, I I pass the value, I assign the value. I store that value in the ITAP. Okay. Then after storing it, I am removing it. So your record will not be deleted from the internal table. Your record will be deleted in the work area. So you stored somewhere, you are deleting here. Got it? So let's take an example of uh, I have a uh, what you can say. 
Uh, okay, tell me something where we can store individually. Then we can group together into some bin. Okay, maybe uh, okay. Let's take an example of I have ordered 10 cakes. Okay. So 10 cakes from different different uh, different different uh, vendors. But I am I am storing the cakes because I don't manufacture my cakes. Let's take a simple example. Okay. Some other you are manufacturing cake, you are manufacturing cake, you are manufacturing cake. Okay. So whenever you send the cake, individually you will pack it back in a single uh, uh, single uh, pocket, right? So when it comes to my store, what I will do? So I cannot store individually. Maybe I have a big uh, 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 refrigerator. Okay, I will take that cake. I will keep that cake in my big fridge. So I don't want that box. Keep it, remove, and throw it into that dustbin. Okay, some other cake comes. Even I will take that cake and keep it in that big. Your yeah, big is an internal table, right? But you are putting the dustbin that pocket into the dustbin but that means you are not you are not removing your cake from the refrigerator here also same answer we have a work area which is in a temporary but internal table which is having a temporary but it's in a having you can store multiple records so transfer the record from work area to the internal table the data is there in the internal table remove the record from the work area but again pack something from work area and keep the value in the internal table and remove the data from the work area so that doesn't impact anything. So that's what I, I cleared again. I assigned another. I cleared if you assign another, it will take the return to the internal table. It's all play, guys. So work area, internal table, variable. You play the things with the work area, internal table, and uh, uh, internal table and variable. So when in the program above, always we try to play with the game. Game with the data objects. That's the programmer. That's it. Now, so slowly the concepts are coming, so you need to practice it. Okay, this is very, very important case. Whatever we discussed today, we heavily use read tables and loop at internal tables and what is sort and descending, ascending, we are going to use the when we comes to the actual concept, we are going to use this kind of statements. You should be strong in this area case. Okay, so don't neglect this. Even though it is simple by seeing and develop it, and whenever the requirement comes, that time we need to use our brain. What statement we need to use it, guys? Okay? So that's the thing, guys. That's it for the day tomorrow. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. At the same time. Yeah.